They came with their education and we got educated. Their way. We learned their language, but they did not learn ours. If we did have a history, we were told to forget it because it was a history of savages. Their manners and ways of living became a model. Suddenly, we open our eyes and see how our countries were exploited, our ancestors murdered and enslaved, our values discarded, our culture vanishing. Now, we try and sift through the mess to identify what is really ours and what isn't. Our present awareness attempts to build a nation from economy. In the 1970s, the United States experienced a wave of black, brown, red, and yellow nationalist movements. On Guahan, this manifested in a cultural renaissance which had prominent social and political implications. In the early 1990s, Guahan witnessed the birth of Nashan Tamoru, a grassroots indigenous rights group. Nashan occupied Adaloop for five months, forcing the local government to enforce the Tamoru Land Trust Act. Besides their political actions, Nishan members became widely known for their traditional body ornamentation. When we were protesting uh, and all the issues in, I want to say, what, the early 90s, late 90s, um, everybody wanted a, a shell ornamentation. And what had happened was that when we protest at the jungles or sites, we would run across artifacts. So some people have uh, actually found Banai shapes. And so, of course, they'd ask me to design their necklace because they want to be unique. And I guess the connection to the past, you know, our ancestry, to give us that strength, the spirit to fight on. And I think that uh, every time we wore our jewelry everywhere, it was almost like nobody wanted to talk to us. Nobody wanted to have anything to do with us. It's almost like if you had a shell necklace on, then you were, you were an activist, you were racist, you were this, you were that. And I guess that, that, had, that was in the fault of the media, the media propaganda. They always made us look like the bad guys. You know, it's okay as long as we know the truth about ourselves. In reality, when we did protest, we had a lot of the Manamsos that were fighting for their land. And some of them were in wheelchairs and things like that. And the reason why I was for it is because rather than have our land being sold for, like they had the land for the landless, it was being lotteried out as though we had a lot of land to lottery out right. and anybody qualified. The way I felt was that the, the land trust, as long as it goes back to our people to use, not to own, but to use, then they can't take that land away and sell it. And I guess with me it came easy because my nana was a strahana and then yeah. she was a farmer and everything. So I learned to appreciate, you know, so while everybody's trying to, to sell us spam, we were raising cows. She was showing me how to slaughter and, you know, how to, to sustain our family with the livestock that we had. And I appreciate that. My nana always had fruit trees and vegetables and when we had seasons, there's a section of the land where she was farming corn. I learned at a young age to appreciate natural, you know, what Mother Nature gives. You take care of Mother Nature, Mother Nature will take care of you. You don't trash the jungle. You don't trash anything because what you trash won't produce. So, yeah, it's really heartbreaking to see that the amount of debris all over the island and how people don't respect the land anymore. That it's the land that will sustain you take care of it so and then now they're going uh what is it um go green go this you know go organically grown foods and i said duh where were you guys we've been doing this you know it just took you that long to get there <laughs> uh, well we need to re bring back our well what we identify with and who we are the people what is traditional in our culture and and that's that's why we, I stuck with it, and I wanted to, to help people connect. Then come to find um, at Mark that they had actually taken photos of the actual pieces that I was cutting into. So it was just like, whoa, and all, you know, all the boys were like, Jill, did you not know that there's pictures of these artifacts? I mean, what the same, same pendants that you're creating right now, there actually are photos at Mark. 
and I've never been to Mars. And so it's just like really crazy how that would turn out, you know? And it's like maybe our ancestors were talking through me, this is the way you're going to do this, because this is what we want to showcase, kind of thing. So I always, I always ask them first, why do you want this tonight? Mm -hmm. And then you would have some people that come in and very nose in the air kind of thing. I want the biggest tonight you got on, sh on the shelf. I'm willing to buy it, you know? And I'm like, why? You know, why do you want to? And if, yeah, I've been looking for a really nice big one, right? And I'm like, ah, oh. you don't, you don't have to have the biggest piece. It's your karma. It's your character. It's the person you are that makes that piece seem, it, you know, enormous. But for people to come in and ask for something large, I'm just like, uh, I don't, I don't understand the logic on that one. That doesn't make sense to me. And you know, so that tells me that's all been a dog too. They don't want to show off. You know that they have the largest piece, but be careful what you ask for. You might hurt your neck doing it. <laughs> so yes, Sanai is not one of the things that I normally would make. Uh, especially nowadays, you have everybody making uh, Sanai's, and what I call the Sanai's or us syndrome. Everybody wants uh, they're out looking for a killing to make all this, and I said no. It's not why you do what you do. Um, your your goal when you are a carver, you're a crafter, is to, to refine your work. As you grow, your skills should be growing, refining, and that's the ultimate goal. Traditionally, our people were known to pass down knowledge, but because we have so much Westernized influence in our life, and that and that influence is, is making us feel like we need to have money to buy what they want us to buy, you know. I don't like working for money, that's not why. It's always nice to earn money, but uh, when you create something, money shouldn't, the dollar sign shouldn't be the one that dictates to you, this is why you're doing this. <laughs> Oh, I'm